Hello everyone, I'm Mix Mars and Marman, and welcome to my channel. In today's video, we're going to be going back to this um, Allen uh, chipper leaf shredder machine that I picked up off of my friend Johnny, who was sending this to scrap. Uh, I have done a video on this already, and it was all running, starting good as gold. However, there are one or two other issues with it. I have had um, starting issues. I have removed the carburetor, put it through the ultrasonic cleaner for about two hours, um, give it a real good clean. However, I think the carburetor may be a little bit on its way out. So I have actually ordered another carburetor for it, but I have ordered a priming carburetor instead of a manual choker. Um, just, just a cheap um, copy. But since putting this machine back together again, I now can get this machine to start off its own back on choke. Uh, there's a little tiny hunt on the top end. Um, nothing excessive at all. I, I can just about just about hear it, but um, it does start off its own back now, which I'm happy with. However, the tank's got a massive hole in it, um, which is no good. Uh, but my good friend Hank over at um, Henry Mworski's channel, he's going to send me a, um, a tank. All I've got to do is just... Um, uh, pay for the postage or, or whatever he wants for a tank as well and he's also going to be sending me a fantastic brand new hoodie as well looking forward to seeing that um, in the video also um you did see me pump the tires up these have been pumped up i haven't added any more air to them uh, for about four and a half weeks so they've stayed up and and they're good to go as well no problem but in today's video i'm going to show you how i how we um are going to take all this apart and uh sharpen the blades remove the blades get them all done because when you go to sell these type of machines if you can say that the blades have been sharpened and uh, and what have it then it is a really really good selling part however it is quite a bit of work to do so but it will reward you in the end because not many people will take these blades off of these machines and sharpen them up um, in, the, in the home user environment. They generally put them into a shop. So I have the advantage where I've got all the power tools to take this all apart and to take all the blades out of them. There are three blades in here, or should be three blades in here, two for the, um, for the chipper and one um, lawnmower style blade for the shredder. Um, but there is, it is quite a bit to take off. Now, I have already taken off the chute, which I shall show you in a minute. It's just three bolts just to get it in, into the shed because it is quite high up. So I will show you where that goes in a minute. But this video is how to change or swap around or sharpen your blades on your chipper shredder, which will go MTD, you know, uh, Yardman. All the, if it looks like similar to this, you know, it's the same thing, same principle. So um, don't be put off. If this is not your machine, this will work for your machine if it is very, very similar indeed, irrespective of what engines on it or the setup. They're all pretty much the samey, samey. So um, if you like this uh, little video to help you out, then hit the old subscribe button, whack the old bell, set notifications to all. That way you'll be told next time I upload another video. So without further ado, let's get down and dirty. Let's get this machine stripped out and chipped out and get the blade sharpened and put back in ready for sale. Okay, so as I've already said to you, I have removed uh, this chute here, uh, which is down down yonder, down down here by my old safety sliders. All it does, uh, there's three, I think they're 13 mils, and all it is, they, they, they just sit on like so, right? You just un, un, undo the bolts, and um, that chute then just comes or comes away, okay? Once that chute has been removed, the first thing you want to do, definitely 110%, is take your HT lead off and put it right out of the way so that there is no way this machine can start. You can even remove the spark plug if you want to. You do not want this machine turning over whilst your hands are uh, inside it. I have also put on a new fuel lead and a fuel stop switch. So I have also turned the fuel off as well. That's where my me, me fuel tap is, uh, is uh, got a hole, a big hole just there. So Hank is sending me one round. So... I'm going to remove the H, uh, the um, the plug because uh, I'm going to need to, to turn the machine over um, so that we can get to the blades with these. And it's not it's not the easiest thing to do with uh, an eight horsepower with a, a, a bit of compression um, on it. So let me just just remove that. So I have just had the machine running. Uh, so I have just put the uh, the carb the carb on it. So. All I can say is, you know, unlike lawnmowers, you just remove HT with a chipper, your hands are going to be uh, directly in the way. So just please remove a spark plug if you can. Put a bit of tissue down, down the hole as well, a bit of, bit of towel, just poke it in the old stop anything getting in there, and then we can move on to the next stage. Okay, round the, um, the other side of the machine, because we have already removed the chute um, for the uh, chipper, um, 
not the shredder side. We want to remove now the shredding side, okay, which is going to be one, two, three, four. But it looked like to be about, about 13 mils. I've got half inch in my hand, what's that? Half inch will probably fit it, to be fair. Because it is a decumps, don't forget. So all we want to do is just start to slacken these off, okay? Don't undo them all the way, uh, because there's quite a bit of weight here. Now, when you uh, actually remove, or go to remove all of this off, uh, this part of the chute, um, your machine's gonna become very, very top heavy on the engine side, okay? So just make sure you're, you're either prepared. Now, I've got this up on, up on the bench. It would probably be, be beneficial for you guys, if you haven't got a, work, a workstation like I've got, is to actually do it on the lawn out the way. Um, so you're on ground level, because this, this will now tip forward once I remove this chute off, okay? So undo those four bolts. You, you might have six, you might have eight on yours, okay? But all you're looking for is just to remove uh, the chute on this side here only. Um, get all those bolts off, and I'll come back to you once you've done it. Okay, so we're nearly there. As I say, this machine may tip forward now, so you just want to make sure you've got hold of it. Um, all you do is just remove this last, this last bolt out, or not, last nut. They can put the, your, your, your nuts back on your studs once you've um, uh, removed it. Now, you want to try and get hold of this machine. Now, that, that is a little bit warm. It's not too bad. But what you can now do is just get hold of a machine where you can and just very, very gently remove it from the studs. Now, that machine wants to tip forward initially. You might want two of you to do this. Once you've got your chute off, you can then just hold your engine nice and steady and just tip that back where it's not going to hurt anything, and then just remove your chute out of the way, because we don't need that anymore until we go to refit it. It's quite heavy. Ooh. So just go a bit careful. Let's get rid of that. That's out of the way. Good. And now we're now left with just literally the engine um, as it is. So now what you want to do is just try and secure it best you can. Um, my fuel was turned off, so it's not, it's not a necessity for me. Um, but just try and get it, because you want to be working on this machine now. So what I may do is I may just literally block mine up uh, with something just underneath. Just to, it's, it's actually bottom heavy. Um, just, just, just block it up just there so that um, the machine doesn't float about. Let me get it blocked up and I'll come back to you in two ticks. Okay, so this, this actual chipper is slightly different to the one I took apart a little while ago. Uh, I did the, M the MTD one, which has since gone. Uh, it, it, it is slightly different. Just gonna put a bit of wood in here just to stop it from moving. There you go, it's perfect for me. Now, you've got to remove all of these bolts. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, probably about 13. There's 13 bolts to remove. Um, now you'll do this if um, you wanna get access to the two little tiny bolts, uh, the blades just down in here. You could possibly get to them without removing this, this shroud, okay? Because you have to access under the bolt this end, and then there's a little tiny uh, Torx bit Allen key the other side of the, of the um, blade, and you access it via the chute side, the other side, the one I took off earlier, okay? The, the little tiny chute, that's where you access it from just here. But I'm gonna remove this shroud here just to make ease of access for myself, and also for uh, better viewing pleasure for you guys, you can see what's going on. So you don't have to do it. Some of these chippers also have a little blade in here, okay, like a lawn, like a miniature lawnmower blade. You just undo the bolt, take the blade off, sharpen the blade up, put it back on, job done. Uh, this one hasn't actually got that. This has got these, these fine teeth just here, which need to be all sharpened up. Um, and also they may have a blade on the very, very end as well, but this is what actually just, just chips it all up. So all these teeth here have got to be resharpened as well, which is quite, a, quite a chore, but uh, not 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 hard to do. So let me get all these bolts all undone, remove this bit of outside cowling, you see, you can see what's going on, and then we can go to the next step. Okay, uh, that's about all those bolts removed now. Uh, there's about 13 or 14 to do. Once they've all come apart, you can then, yep, very carefully bounce your machine, that there, and then that should, by rights, separate up. Might have also one more bolt in there somewhere. It's just hanging, hanging on for dear life. Uh, that one just there, I think, that's the one. But it should separate now from where it wants to be. They're all removed. Yeah, they're all removed. There it goes. So we remove that. I've got one more bolt. Just here to take out, there it is. And there is your uh, cowling removed. 
Let me just pop this engine up. I don't go anywhere. That's better. There's your engine removed. <coughs> oh, sorry, your, your cowling removed, so that now you can gain proper access to to the blade here. Now, as I say, you don't have to remove it all because um, you can just access it from here. But the idea is, I just want to show you. I'll go on the other side in a bit. Is on the other side of this blade just here there will be some form of Allen key or something along that line. All you've got to do, give a bit of penetrating lube um, and then try to undo these as they are. If they don't undo, you may have to put uh, an Allen key on the other side of it to hold the bolt still whilst you undo the nut, but you do it via the other side. Let me swing the machine round and I'll show you exactly what I mean. Okay, so we're now around the other side of the machine, um, or turn the machine around, and uh, as you can see, I can now spin this machine with relatively freeness because the spark plug is out, okay? And this is a bit where your, um, your chipper uh, side of it is, the big, long, tall, thin shoot, and as you rotate it round, you'll see very shortly one of the blades will turn up. There it is. So there's one. Uh, should be two. Um, in fact, I think you've only got one on this one. Just one, which is weird. I thought you'd have two. But there's another another space around here. Let me just bring it round. I don't think someone's welded one on. No, just one. So on, on some machines, you've got two. On this machine, you've got the one. That's Andy Harry. Right, so there it is there. Okay, and as you can see, these have got like little tiny, um, uh, some some form of Allen key or something in there. Obviously, it's going to be filled up with, with uh, chippings and bits and pieces in there. So you may have to get in there with a little tiny scalpel or a little tiny pick of which I'm just trying to find a sensible one now, um, just to clean that surface up. So you can then get your, um, you can then get your tool in there. It will just be just be gunked up in there with something. There you go, just pick something out. So clean that up, okay. Bit of spray and what have you, and then we we'll come back. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put some lubrication for the nation. On, um, on here, and I have got some of this new SAS spray stuff that someone bought me. I might put some of that on there because that's a that's a penetrant. Um, let's just put some of that on there. Now, what you don't want, ideally, is these bolts to shear off because they are countersunk. So you could potentially just put any old bolt in there. There is enough clearance there that they are countersunk. So you don't want to really muck about them too much. So what I recommend is you should just, you just don't go too mad. Yeah, don't hang on it like, like, like your life depends on it. Um, but there's two bolts on the back side here, which I'm gonna try and undo, which are the same bolts here and here, okay? They should be about half inch, but it'd be about the same as everything else on this machine. So good fit. And then you've got, you might have to, try, you might have to block, this, block this flywheel up so it doesn't, it doesn't actually spin on you. So maybe a bit of wood or a, a decent breaker bar would be good, Mick, actually, at this point. Put a breaker bar. Just going to slide the breaker bar down this side here onto this cowling so that when I actually rotate it, it will block it off. That's the idea, and it won't move. No, I don't like that. So let's go on to the impact. I'm just trying to get a little tiny whiz with old impact just to try and get it to move. There you go, it's got one moving. But is it spinning? I think we might have actually got it. Let's have a look. Let's have a look, baby. Now it's spinning, okay. So the whole lot is spinning, but that, that, that's good though, because at least we've got it, got something moving. Um, so these have been in there a little while. I, I dare say these probably haven't even been removed from day one. On the very first day it was manufactured. So we have got one moving. You could put a little bit of heat on there as well, that wouldn't hurt it. I've got one moving, let's try and get the other one to move. There it goes, that's moving now. And it's spinning. So we have actually broken the seal. So now I've just got to figure out what it actually is that's actually in there that's actually holding holding those, those bolts solid. A bit of digging about and a bit of cleaning in the old hole on both. There's something in there, so it's, it's, just, it's just wood and muck and dirt. I give that a good clean. I dare say it's a little tiny Allen key. Because of the age of a machine, Torx wasn't really a, wasn't really a thing. That's it. Let's get some Allen keys. Allen! 
Uh, and let's put that Allen key in there, see what we get. That's a little bit too small, Mikus. I might get some point some points out. Uh, I think jumping from I think it's gonna be about a 4.5, I, I, I think. Yeah. So let's put those ones back. And somewhere, someone bought me from old Amazon Wishes a long time ago. First time in using um, a full set of Allen keys, Allen, which is also got Imperial and Metric. I think it might be around about there. Let's go for nines. No. It's all a bit of a guesstimation game. Let's go for 730. Let's go for 3 sixteenths. Yeah, that'll do it. All right, 3 sixteenths Allen key is on. And then, and then we're going to go and undo his bolts. They've got very, very gentle. That's come off. Look at that slash. So remove that and then remove the bolt. They're hard and steel, they are. They need to be. Alan! Who's Alan? Um, let's undo this one. That one's coming. Lovely. Oh, that's easier than what I thought it was going to be. Right, with those bolts now removing, you can now remove the actual blade itself. I'm surprised there's only one on here. I am surprised. On the MTD one I did, I had two. And there's your blade. Easy. So I'm going to clean it off on the wire wheel. And then we'll get that sharpened up in a bit. Um, all it really, really wants is just a clean and then just follow that edge just to make it really nice. And just remember when it goes back on, it's got to go over countersunk facing you guys. So not the countersunk facing down, countersunk goes back on just like so. Now that's taken about 25 minutes to do that. Um, and that, that is pretty much all you need to do to sharpen that one up. As I say, on the other ones, it is slightly different. Um, it has got like a lawnmower blade the other side, which you just remove and again you just sharpen it. Some of these machines have two of these blades, one each side, and that will explain the reason why on this side of a blade, just here, you guys can't see, but on this side there's a little tiny block of metal which someone has welded to it. Now there's no holes there, so no one's actually done, done a Burton and just, just bodged it. Um, that's just sort of countersunk on it, so therefore um, it's not designed to have two on here, but lots of them do have two, even more than that. So um, that's that bit done. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Okay, around the other side of the machine, uh, here's a weight on the opposite side to the, the other blade. So it wasn't designed to have two on here, this just had one. Uh, now this is the shredding size. This is for your small stuff, your leaves and your briar, things like that. So these don't necessarily have to have lots of blades. This is spinning at quite a revolution. It, ju it just shreds it, okay? But what I'm gonna do, there are quite a few little grooves on here which have got a bit of lipping. Just gonna grab my, my, my die grinder or my my um my Dewalt um grinder and just, just gonna tidy these up. Just, just gonna get rid of the burrs. I don't think it's essential they need to be done. Uh, but as I say, the other machines they'll have a, like a lawnmower blade it goes through here, okay? You just undo this big this big nut just here on the center, that comes off, okay? And then the lawnmower blade comes off on off of that, and you just sharpen the lawnmower blade up as you would any normal lawnmower blade, and then um you put it all back together. So this is a bit different here. This is where your hammers would generally be. So these are a multi-machine. Generally, you'd have four hammers, one, two, three, four, which would spin um, on a different flywheel. And uh, that's actually what shreds it. This doesn't have that on here. Um, so that would be where your hammers would swing through, through there as well. Um, <clears throat> I think also there may be a guard missing here as well. There should be a guard in here. Um, I need to look at that. Uh, I don't want to be selling the machine without a guard. There should be a guard, it's not actually on here, I don't think. However, it is a different machine. So it's not so it isn't a guard on this one, but I dare say health and safety, there will be. So I need to look into that just to try and find some kind of guard to fit in here, which will fit um, and not include on the hammer. So got to do that as well. <laughs> okay, I've done a bit of grinding. All I'm doing is just literally just grinding these, these teeth a bit sharper, just taking the burrs off. There's a few burrs on here. Um, just taking them off to, just, to, just to sharpen up a little tiny bit. But I don't want a lot of work, <coughs> to be fair. Um, but uh, cause this, is, this is the shredding side, so this is just churning it all up. And um, this is spinning at quite a revolution as well. There's no blade on the bottom of here. I would, would expect to see a little blade on the bottom of here. But I may just tidy these up a, a touch as well. Just, just put a little tiny edge on those, because as the stuff is coming in, it's going to be collecting down the bottom here so, and, and swilling around and uh, being churned up before it gets spat out. So uh, we'll just clean these up just a touch of these teeth with a little tiny grinder, as I have been doing. And they're, they're looking a bit better than what they, what they were beforehand. So that's pretty simple. But the other one, um, 
the little tiny one. Let's bring it over to the old, uh, the old vice. I just want to get that, get that one um, sharpened up. Let's bring you over. Ooh. <coughs> Let's bring you in here. Swing you around so you can see what's going on. That's it. So all we're going to be doing on this one here is just going to be tidying this on the wire wheel very, very quickly. Just to get a bit of a tidy. And then we're going to resharpen this blade here. So let's just uh, bring it down. Uh, what's turned on here? I've got ultrasonic cleaner on at the moment. And I want me a... I want my grinder. Which I think is that one there. That goes around there, around there, around there. Where's the other end of it? That's up here. Just want to turn on the old... The old wire wheel of many things. Uh, turn it on, mate. That's it. Just clean it up. That's all we're going to be doing. Nothing essential. Get rid of some debris. That'll do, float. We'll bring it around to here now. Now all I'm going to be doing is just to move it out of the way because that's flammable. Um, just want to tidy this edge up. It's not. It's not too bad. It's a little bit beaten. That's all it is. So I'm just going to grab, put that into a vice. Now it's going to be best to sort of just put it on the on the angle, but dangle. Move that light out of the way. It's right in my way. Let me just do that up on the old angle, but dangle. It's going to be about there. That's good. I'm going to grab my brand spanking new. Mrs. P bought me for, for my birthday. A new cordless um, grinder. Now, I've got a vice going out to be outside, so I will be doing all my grinding uh, outside very, very soon uh, because I don't want to be doing it indoors. A uh, bit of eye protection because uh, you only get one set of eyes. Well, you get two, you get glass eye, but that's, that's irrelevant. That's all it really wanted. Didn't want a lot, so I'll just do the back edge of it as well. Just gonna put another little edge on there because the blade is slightly worn just this side. I'm happy with that. It didn't want a lot, but it will make all the difference when it comes to um, to actually chipping. If a, if a blade is not sharp, it won't cut. It's as simple as that. Okay, so now we're gonna put this blade back in. Nice and sharp, no problems there. Um, so spin the blade round to where it needs to sit. It's gonna be about there. Remember what I said to you, the countersunk parts have to face outwards. You've got two little tiny bolts. Just get them ready. So it's a lot of work to do. But if you've your own machine, you can just buy, go and buy new blades or, or put it into a shop, get it done, pay the money, walk away from it, and, and it'll be done when it'll be done when you come back. Or you can just do it yourself. You can just buy new blades from. Um, takes about half hour to 45 minutes, give or take, if it comes apart nice. The problem with these, these type of machines is if you, if you don't use them all the time, if they don't get used a lot, once the bolts are in, put your Allen key in the back, get your little tiny socket, whatever it is you're using. Nick that one up first, and nick the other one up. That one's nice and tight. Come on, baby. That's tight. Right. So that's the blades done. Uh, sharp and front and back chipper and shredder. Um, the ones on this side here have just been tiffled um, because they're not actually not actually blades. They're just designed for chewing rather than slicing. Um, so now that's done. 
what we can now do is turn the machine around and uh, we're going to put the, um, the cowling back on. This is where it takes a bit of time, guys. So just be patient with it. Um, you've got about another 15 bolts to drop now. What I recommend you do is get it in place, get one or two just sort of half, half in. Do you know what? I'll just show you. Okay. With the blades all now sharpened and, and, and all sort of cleaned up where you want it to be, uh, some people do actually drill a hole in the bottom of here, just let any water out over if they're stored outside and what have you. That might be something you want to do, just drill a little tiny hole in here, because we do, we do hold a bit of water. Um, so these have just been tiffled up just with a, um, a small grinder, just to, just to take the edges off. It's been a little while, but it, this actually shreds quite well. Um, now you want to do is just get, grab hold of your, grab hold of your cowling, just put one in, right? And then we just hang that up just so it's roughly in place, all right? And just put one in. And just, just, just loosely goosely. Now is the job of putting in every single bolt that there is. Just put the bolts in first. And you've got about 13 to do. Just go around and do the whole lot. Just don't get, don't get confused with the other bolts that you might already out. But if you just sort of put just the bolts in, then you, then you, then your uh, your cowling will be will go down nicely together. Once you once you've got all your bolts in, uh, go around and just do, just do your nuts up, and uh, before you screw it all down, just just make sure every single nut and bolt is or nut and bolt is on and holding where it needs to be because some of them are just a bit just a bit tricky. But just get them all to fit. You see what I'm doing. Um, get the nuts and bolts on and I'll be back to you once I've done that. Okay, all my uh, nuts and bolts has been done up. So now, um, I'm gonna bring the chute in. Oh, for this little cookie. Oh, it's quite lumpy. Now all you wanna do is get one of your, get one of your nuts ready. Try and balance it on there so it don't go nowhere. Hold it just there, Mick. Don't move. That's it. Try, trying to work around the old camera here, guys. Just bear with me. Don't forget, all my videos are sort of live. We don't muck about. So get one of your nuts ready, and I recommend you go for the top one. Okay? So all you want to do is present it to it. Go very careful. We're going to tip the machine up. Right, that's presented. Just get that one started. Once that one's started, you are very careful on the threads as well. You don't, you don't want to ruin the threads on here. Once it's sort of started a little bit, you don't go too mad because you've got, you've got to line the other ones up yet. And they may not want to line up because the machine is not perpendicular. But once you've sort of got them half lined, this is going to be about there. Ooh, there goes one, that's it. Grab the next one. As soon as you get one in, just line it up. Yeah. I think the bottom one probably, probably hasn't gone yet, no. So I've got to go around the other side of the machine. Let me grab the other nuts. Just grabbing my nuts, baby. Go around the other side of the machine. And tip it up. And just, just manipulate it. It is quite heavy. There it goes, that's gone. It's balancing now. That's that one. Get that bottom one in. That's one of the most important ones. And if you don't write, you won't damage your threads. Who's Fred? Um, now that's done up successfully, we can now grab your grab your half inch Ooh. spanner or ratchet, whatever it is you got, and just wind. Some of his own. And I will be doing these up with a uh, a spanner a bit later on. Can I get in there, Mick? On that one, maybe. Yeah, that's that one. The one at the top I might have to do up with a with a with a, with a spanner or a ratchet. That one I can get. Good, and then just a little tiny half inch ratchet. 
and then nick that one up let's get it started up mate that's it so it bites lovely now i have got to put a cover on this um because the cover's broken so we'll leave the cover off for now just put the bolts back in uh, i'm gonna get like a mini a mini wheel tire just to put on the end there so no no hands can creep up inside the um up inside it whilst it's running obviously it goes without saying you're not going to operate this bit of machinery with kids knocking about and you're not going to put your hand up inside somewhere where the wood's coming out even if it gets blocked you're going to turn the machine off right guys you wouldn't put your hand in an alligator's mouth would you to get a chicken out you know what i mean so it, it sort of goes without saying let me um, spin the machine around and we'll put the chute back on. And we're pretty much there. Right, chute time. So I've got to remove the, um, the nuts off here, which we put by earlier on. Obviously, you didn't see me remove this one. Um, I had to get it off just, just to uh, get it in the machine, get it jacked up. But I think I've got enough room if I uh, am careful. Now, on these, you've got a little tiny slit down the bottom. Okay, so that one is, is going to be presented onto... Um, the bottom stud so just to put your little tiny nut just loosey-goosey and then just present it onto it in fact you might throw that back off maybe i was wrong that's what going first because uh because of a tank like that now hold it into place with one hand and get the top ones on because the top ones are going to be the ones that are going to hold this this all on caution do not put your hand down the hole it says here now i'm pretty sure they, i'm pretty sure they didn't just put that on there just for saying you don't be putting your hand in there oh my lord you'll be losing you'll be losing digits and fingers and arms because it will just it will just take it will just take it straight off absolutely no messing now i can't get in there with that so i'm going to have to use either a spanner or an impact to get in there now if i remember rightly i actually had to use about 14 extension leads for extension bars for one of these that's that one on i'm gonna do that one now the one at the back here you might want to get two or three extensions because um it's a bit of a it's a bit of a, a long way to go so i think i used about two or three extensions from what i remember i would have used that one definitely i might be i might get away with that let's see Got quite a long extension here uh, and it lives all the way down right the way down through there through, no i want a longer extension as well on top of that my word let's get another big extension that's it so i've got probably about three foot of extension in there and i want to work it all the way down through there and onto my nut which is not really easy because i put an extension a new fuel lead on it there it goes there that's all on you can just put a spanner in there but i'm, I'm not into that right so me thinks we're pretty much there um blade's been sharpened which was the uh, the actual the actual goal goal of the video and now it's all fully fully on the old uh, machine uh shoots back on uh which is cool Right, so there you go. Shoots back on, no drama, three bolts. Uh, all this is back together now. I've got to get a cover for the other side of it and uh, that sort of stuff. But now it should all run and do what it should do. Now, I have had this machine fired up once already today um, because I did actually clean the carburetor up already um, because the machine was mucking about. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is take it off of the off of the stand. We'll take it outside and we'll go for a fire up, shall we? Um, hopefully this carburetor is now going to, now going to do its job. Uh, I have ordered another carburetor as I say, but I would like to keep it original if I can. Um, but Henry Moore is going to send me a new tank for it, um, or a second hand tank. Once that tank comes, the machine's then complete and we can go to sell it then. Um, I've got to put a cover on the far side, which will be just an old tyre, which will just sort of lope, lope down so you can't put your hands in. That's the idea. 
um, stop your hands from going up in there because you wouldn't put your hand in there. Um, right, let's get it outside and uh, we'll go for a little fight so it doesn't start up and uh, we'll see what happens. Right, let's grab this machine then. It wheels so much easier now that we, the tyres are pumped up. Do I, darling? Mrs. P's just told me, guys, that she's been had to the car for a wash. And what did you do, darling? You hoovered the driveway. Yeah, yeah well done you. Yeah. I, su I, su I suspect the driveway needed hoovering. Right, so there it is. One chipper shredder. Wants a bit of a hose off. I might get Mrs. P to ho hose pipe it off later on. Um, one chipper shredder. Now, this did have problems starting um, earlier on, like I say. <clears throat> but hopefully now we, we might we might have might have cured that. Um, let's try and start it up then. Now I've got to get, as I say, got to have a, a new fuel tank put on it because the fuel tank is uh, is not much cop. Um, it's held together with a bit of duct tape at the moment until my mate Hank sorts me out. I'm going to turn the fuel on, so I put a fuel line inline fuel tap on it now. Now I may not start first, Paul, because we've got the fuel come down. <clears throat> but I have fully cleaned the carburetor for now. Uh, the car's been cleaned. Blade's been sharpened. I've got to get just a chute cover for this, just so it goes. I'm gonna get like a tire and cut it in, in cut a quarter out so it bolts here and goes all the way down and covers there so that the, the, the chip in sort of goes down and you can't put your hand in there. That's the idea. Um, but obviously, people that use this type of petrol machine, they're gonna have a bit of savvy, all right? The people that use the garden one, just your garden ones, electric ones, not so much. But this is designed so that when you put the stuff in, you physically can't touch, I'm six foot, you, I can't touch that blade. My blade, is, my hand is here, okay? So I can't touch that, I can't touch that blade. And the same with the other side is designed so that when you put your hand in, you put your hand all the way down there, right, people? All the way in, okay? You shouldn't go past this level here. But you put your hand all the way in, up to the shoulder, and I'm still three quarters of the damn tube. I still can't touch the blade. So you are designed not to touch it. But people maybe, Put the hand in there um, because they're silly. But uh, you can't account for stupidness, right? So let's see if it's start now. <coughs> um, fuel's turned on, a bit of revs. The engine's absolutely stone cold, okay? Because I've been working for a half hour, 45 minutes on this video. Turn it on to choke. Let's see if it actually start up for us so it wouldn't start off its own back. So there you go, chipper, shredder, done. Okay, so there you have it, one chipper, shredder, now all done. Carburet has been cleaned twice now, I put it through ultrasonic clean in this, in this, in this video, uh, or prior to it, and uh, it's now working, starting off its own back. It wouldn't start off its own back after about a day or two. 
So it's a bit more testing. I have got another carburetor for it, but it's a priming carb. Um, I thought I'd try that rather than a manual choker, because uh, that way you're actually injecting fuel into the cylinder head. That, that might work a bit better for it, but we shall see. Um, and uh, the blades have been sharpened and what have you now. It chips, it shreds, it does what it should do. It starts with its own back, which is now nice. I will check that over the next coming days and weeks before I put it up for sale. And my mate Hank over at Henry Mawarski's channel, go and check out Hank's channel. We'll try and leave a link in the comment section for me. Or if not, just check out in the comments. You'll see Henry Mawarski in the comment section. Go and check him out and go and uh, check his channel out. And just if everyone can remind Henry to um, send me a hoodie with a fuel tank, that'd be great. He sent me a fuel tank all the way over from America. On Amazon, they were uh, £112 um, pounds for a, a brand new Tecumseh um, fuel tank on Amazon UK. And he's going to send it over for nothing, I think. I don't think he wants anything for the actual part, but I've got to pay the shipping, which would be about, I don't know, 25 quid, something like that. So I'm getting it at a third of the price, along with a free hoodie. Absolutely fantastic. So good, good as gold. So there you go. One chip of shredder. How to do, um, take the shoots off, do the blades, put it all back together, start it up, and make sure it all runs. That's the video for you guys. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give it a big old thumbs up, hit the old subscribe button, and whack the old bell. Set notifications to all. It's completely free of charge to subscribe to my channel. It doesn't cost you a single penny. So hit the old subscribe button with it and help the old channel out. I look forward to the next episode of Mixed Mars very, very soon. But until then, guys, don't forget, much more importantly, take her easy.